In this lesson, we're going to ask ourselves the question, what does the standard deviation mean? The standard deviation is a number. It's a number that tells us how spread out a given data set is. For example, if I'm looking at the data set 45, 45, 46, 48, 50, 52, those numbers are all relatively close to each other, and therefore they're relatively close to the mean in which case the standard deviation would be small. But this set of numbers, 30, 40, 50, 80, 100, 120, are much more spread out. So that's a way for us to examine the behavior of a data set by looking, generally speaking, how close the numbers are packed together or how spread out they are. And to do that, we're going to take a look at the standard deviation. So I've taken a collection of numbers and I've put them in an Excel spreadsheet. You'll notice the smallest number is 34 and the highest number is 77. Can we get the mean for that data set, the average? Well certainly we could add them all up and divide by the number that we have in the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If we added all those up equals the sum of all of those numbers. Excel tells us that the sum of those 10 numbers is 600. So the average would have to be 600 divided by 10 or would have to be 60. So we'll say that the mean equals 60 is where we're starting. Now to look at the standard deviation we're looking for deviations from the mean. So how far away from the mean are these? So we compute x minus x bar. Well, 34 is our first number. How far is 34 from the mean? Well, 34 minus 60 is negative 26. What I can do is I can let Excel help me with that. I can type equals, click on the 34 minus 60, and you'll see that indeed we get negative 26. Taking it down to the next level, 42 minus 60 should be negative 18. And continuing with that, we can get all of our deviations. So this column is essentially the deviations. But if we add up all the deviations, we're going to get zero. And that's not going to help us very much. So what we really want is we want the deviation squared. To get the deviation squared, we are going to do x minus x bar squared. So we're going to take all of our numbers in the first column and square them. So negative 26 squared is 676, and we will move all of those together. So now what is the sum of those guys? So the sum of the deviation squared, so sum of deviation squared, which is what we want, what will that be? That is going to equal... the sum of all these things. And what does that give us? That gives us 1,628. So 1,628 is our sum of our deviations squared, and that's going to help us make some sense out of what we're working with here. So let's look at our formula. We define this in terms of the variance. The variance is s squared. The variance is the standard deviation squared. And notice what we get. We get the sum of x minus x bar squared divided by n minus 1. That is the sum of the deviation squared divided by n minus 1. We saw earlier that the sum of the deviation squared is 1628. So we will plug that into the formula and see what we get. So we're computing the variance. So the variance will be 1628. divided by n minus 1. There were 10 numbers in our data set divided by 10 minus 1, which of course is going to be 1628 divided by 9. And uh, we can 
go to Excel to help us do that. So we can say equals 1628 divided by 9. And that gives us 180.89. So 180.89 is our variance. Now, S, the standard deviation, has to be the square root of the variance. So S will be the square root of 180.89. And again, we'll go to Excel to help us do that. What is the square root of 180.89? Equals SQRT of that number. And what do we get? We get 13.45 approximately. So, the standard deviation for this data set appears to be 13.45. We had how many numbers in our data set? 34 through 77. We had 10 numbers in our data set, and we believe our standard deviation is 13.45. So, let's go ahead and use Excel, excuse me, to use, sure, I guess we could use Excel to check our work. We have these numbers. And let me scroll over just a little bit so we can see it better. Maybe I can't. So we're going to say equals STDEV. And then I'm going to highlight all of these numbers. So equals STDEV. And the computer will tell us what the standard deviation is for that set of numbers. And what do we get? Indeed, 13.45. So this reinforces to us that the answer that we're looking for is correct. So our formula again is the variance s squared is the sum of x minus x bar squared divided by n minus 1. And let's take a look at one more example. I have the ages of the Chicago White Sox on opening day of 2011. And we want to go ahead and find the standard deviation. So this first column is x. The next column I need x minus x bar. So to do that, we've got to figure out what, this, what the mean is. So I'm going to let Excel help me. We can construct the mean by adding up the total number of ages and then dividing by 25, since there are 25 numbers in this list. But we'll take a shortcut here with the average. And we have an average age of 29.64. So the x minus x bar column will be equals highlight this number, minus 29.64. That's our deviation. So this first person is 32. His age is slightly above average. And then we will autofill this all the way down so that we have the deviations from the mean. Notice this 43-year-old gentleman, Omar Vizquel, is 13.36 years older than the mean. And here is one of the younger players whose age is 7.6 years younger than the mean. But if we sum the deviations, that's not going to do it for us. We need to take x minus x bar squared. So we'll square all of those numbers. And we will sum all of those. And then what are the sum of the deviations squared? Sum all those numbers, and we get the sum of the deviation squared is 503.36. Okay, so to finish this up, we'll go back to our formula for the variance. The sum of the deviation squared, 503.76, divided by n minus 1, divided by 25 minus 1, is going to equal is going to equal 20.99 and s of course will be the square root of that the square root of 20.99 which equals 4.58